Hi, my name is Trisha Jong and I'm a Technical Evangelist for Tivoli Storage Manager. Today I'm going to walk you through how to set up and use automated failover with your node replication. Uh, this is a new feature in TSM 7.1 and it complements our pre-existing node replication features that were added back in Tivoli Storage Manager 6.3. What node replication does is it allows for the incremental copies of backed up files, archived files, space managed files from your primary server, which in this picture is TSM Server A, over to a secondary server, also known as our target server, which in this case is TSM Server B. And in this method, if your TSM Server A were to go down for whatever reason, hardware failure, disaster, whatever, the client could automatically restore files from TSM Server B, from the target server. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to do secondary backups from your client node, so you don't have to be taking tapes off-site. Everything can be done for this disaster recovery on an incremental basis by simply scheduling node replication to send its data over to the target server. Now I have a whole other YouTube video on node replication and how to set up node replication, so be sure to check that out. What I'm going to walk you through today is the new automated failover feature, so that if server A does go down, you can automatically have the TSM clients point to TSM server B, the target server, and do the restores directly from there. So no manual intervention would be needed at that point. Um, this feature works when both the target and the primary server are at TSM 7.1. It's very easy to set up as you'll see here in a minute. Um, and the only other requirement is once you have both your primary and your target server at TSM 7.1 and your clients at TSM 7.1, you'll also at least have to have done one replication um, prior to this being able to be used on the 7.1 platform. In order to enable automated failover, on the target server we will set a failover HL address and then that address will be sent out to the TSM clients and stored in the option files. So now if the TSM server A has a failure and the TSM client node goes to try and do a restore from server A and sees that it's down, it will automatically be redi redirected over to the target server. TSM Server B, and it'll be able to restore the files directly from TSM Server B. Now along the way, um, once it's done with its restores and once the TSM Server A comes back again, then the TSM Server A will continue to be the location that we do backups and other restores from for this particular client. This failover is only for restores and retrieves, it is not for backups or archives. So all we're using the server B for is a restore or retrieve location. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a live demo here. So here we are over in our demo environment. I have two TSM servers. I've got the lab server, which is the TSM1 image, and the TSM server 2, which is the target server. You can see from this query stat command, that we do have replication set up. It is replicating from the lab server as our primary over to our target server of server 2 and we're replicating all of the data. Notice we do not yet have a high um, level address set up for failover. If we look at the secondary server, let's actually look at the operations center, you'll see in here that um, data has already been replicated. Here we have client 01 showing up twice. The first time it belongs to the lab server and it's in a send state coming from the server 2. And over on the second instance it's the client 01 belonging to server 2 which is our, our target server, it's in a receive state, and the peer server, of course, is the TSM server 1 lab server. Back on the, the primary server, we can also do a um, query and take a look at the file spaces that are replicating for our client 01. You can see that we've set up our, back, our replication rules to be replicated across for that client 01. If I look at my options file for client 01, dsm.op, this is all that's currently showing up in that options file. And we'll take a look at that after we set up high level failover. To set up the failover capability, you simply issue one command from your 
um, primary server, and that would be set fail over HLADDRESS 192.168.100.80 happens to be the address for my target server, and we'll go ahead and um, issue that set. Now, the next time that your TSM client logs on, it's going to actually update the DSM option file with this information. So let me close out this option file and we will um, come back and take a look at it here in a second. Let's log on to the GUI, TSM Backup Archive GUI. Okay, now that we've logged into the GUI, we can actually go to the file information and look at the connection information there. And you will see that it is being um, replicated and it does show that it's failing over to server 2. Okay, and now if we were to actually go and take a look at that options file associated with that um, client 01, we should now have some new entries inside of it. And in fact, there we there we have it. So we have this new information was added into um, the client options file automatically and it tells which replication server this should be automatically fail over to if the primary server is down. Likewise, if we go and we do a query stat inside of the primary TSM server, you will now see that the um, high-level failover address has been set on the TSM server as well. So any of the clients doing replication will now, when they log in again, will have this information refreshed in their options file. Okay, let's go ahead and simulate a failure. So in this case, I'm just going to halt the primary TSM server. So we're starting at the TSM client. Remember, the primary server is now down, so it should try to contact the primary server, see that it's down, and then connect into the secondary server instead. Okay, since the primary server was down, we do get this message saying that it is going to connect to the secondary server, but the secondary server is read-only. We do not do any backups to that secondary server, just restores. And to reiterate that, you'll see that the backups in the archives are grayed out. However, I can click and do a restore. Um, if I want to know where I am restoring from, I can also do, um, I can take a look in here and it'll tell me where I'm pulling the data from. So this connection information is kind of like a query session. And you can see who we're connected to. We're connected in failover mode to our server too. So let's go ahead and let's say, let's go ahead and do a restore here. Okay, we can go ahead and choose to do a restore of some of the data that we backed up originally. And then that data was replicated from the primary server over to the target server where we're currently restoring from. Okay, and then we can go ahead and choose to restore. And if you want to restore it to a temporary location or a, a primary location, that's fine. Okay, and our restore is completed. So what we just did is we restored files from the target server because our primary server was down. Let's do a second scenario now where the TSM server is replicating from the primary to the target, but a failure occurs before data has been fully replicated across. So maybe it occurs after your nightly backup, but before the replication occurs. Um, if we go to the client, in this case I'm using the command line, and we issue the query file dash detail command, we can see that right now all the replication is current for this particular um, client. However, if we were to kick off a new backup, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and kick off another backup of a file system and force the backup of these files. And now we won't give the TSM server a chance to replicate. We'll go ahead and force a disaster. In this case, we're just going to issue a halt.
So now when I go to do a restore, when I go to do a restore, I get the message that my primary server is down and I'm connecting to my secondary server. Once again, I can see that the f many of the files um, only can be restored or retrieved. They cannot be backed up or archived. So we'll do a restore. When I actually go to do the restore, I get a warning that the last backup was not replicated over to the target server. And so what's being restored is the information that was replicated prior to my previous backup. So this is just um, good to know because you, you need to understand that in these scenarios you will not have the most recent um, restore coming back from your target because replication had not finished. Okay, my restore completed and in, in this case it restored the last version that had been replicated across. Okay, so what I've showed you is how automatic failover works um, with node replication and how easy it is to set up. I showed you two scenarios. The first scenario where server A had completely replicated that nightly backup over to server B, the target server, prior to server A going down. The second scenario I showed you was what would happen if server A failed prior to being able to replicate the data across to server B. And in that case you got a warning saying you were restoring, um, you were not restoring the most recently backed up information. The one other thing you do need to take into consideration is if you are using SSL, you will need to manually configure the SSL um, both uh, for the primary and the target server on the clients. Node replication is an excellent disaster recovery tool so that if there is a failure on your primary server, your clients can automatically restore their data or retrieve their data directly from the secondary target server. Thank you for your time and be sure to check out the other YouTube videos on Tivoli Storage Manager features and functions.